it's just practicing gratitude every single day. It's, sure. you know, I wake up and I'm Pizzeria grateful. Pizzeria grata. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> grata. It's the exactly. Italian translation for grateful. So um, it was a really big part of why we chose that name. And, um, you know, it's, it's, we are grateful to wake up every single morning. We are grateful to have a job to go to. We are grateful to be able to serve the customers that we serve. We are, we're just grateful to be here. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in and welcome to the Austin All Day Podcast. I am Jason Powers and joining us here today is Chef Nathan Perlman from Pizzeria Grata and his lovely wife, Ilana, from Iced Cakes. Pizzeria Grata offers 25% off for service industry, 20% off for first responders, medical industry, and teachers. So go get yourself a pie. Thank you to Ranch Rider Spirits for sponsoring the podcast, offering the Chilton Tequila Paloma and the Ranch Water. You guys, if you haven't already, follow the podcast on Instagram, sit back, grab a slice, and check it out. So welcome. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah. Uh, Chef Nathan from Pizzeria Grata. Yep. And wife, Elena? Ilana. 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 From iced, iced cakes, iced cakes and confections. Yep. Okay, got these names right. Yeah, <laughs> it's Ilana. Yes. Yes, Ilana. Okay. All right, I only read it once. Oh, you're good. Don't worry. <laughs> so, thank you guys for coming in here. Absolutely. I know it's not too far from you, Pizzeria Grata. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. I, I went home and uh, showered and changed and got myself feeling human again before coming over here. But there we go. Yeah, we we live in the Oak Hill area, so it wasn't too bad. Yes. Yeah. So before we we get into anything, tell us about well both things here, Pizzeria Grotta. Mm-hmm. Let's start with this. Yeah. So uh, Pizzeria Grotta, uh, we started out as kind of like going for like you know not necessarily like verified traditional Neapolitan pizza, but you know wood fired pizza. Um, we are actually inside of the convenience store um, at Beatnik's Market, the Valero off of uh, Manchac and 290. And, um, you know, originally we were kind of going for the Neapolitan thing. Um, you know, it's what a lot of people like. It's what a lot of people look for. And uh, we found because most of our business is takeout, we only have five seats. Um, so most of our business being takeout, that, you know, high hydration dough, the really fast cook, it's not conducive for carrying out in a box. Sure. You know, it turns into this like kind of soggy mess and nobody wants it. Um, so what it's kind of become now is a uh, a blend of like a New York style and a Neapolitan. So still kind know, of noticed that. Yeah. Okay. Now I know the reason. Yeah. All right. So it's just, uh, it's a slightly lower hydration dough. Um, we cook it a little bit longer to give, you know, a little bit more stability and setup um, in the bread. And uh, it carries a lot better, you know, reheats really well. And, um, you know, I think we finally kind of nailed down the recipe after a few months and we're, we're really, really happy with the product we're putting out. Very cool. And the Valero, yes? Yep. Inside the Valero. Nice. So the, the save, the savory husband here, (laughs) all right. And and, and, and the pastry side of things, we have iced, iced cakes. Yes. And tell me a little bit about this. Yeah. So we are a luxury wedding cake company. Um, okay. We do uh, everything is scratch made. We don't use box mix. No weird ingredients you can't pronounce kind of thing. Yeah. Um, all of our flavors are very exciting. We don't do white cake, white icing. Um, so our traditional wedding cake is like a caramelized white chocolate raspberry. And yeah, everything we do is just really straightforward, very modern, very elegant. We also do sugar flowers, which is really cool too. So it's actually edible flowers on your cake that you can save forever. Very, very cool. So this is keeping both of you guys busy. Yeah. You could say that. Do you guys <laughs> have hands in each other's uh, projects? Um, yeah. I mean, she's like my, uh, she's always my brutally <laughs> honest reviewer. She's not afraid to hold back. And, uh, um, yeah. you know, so if I'm ever kind of playing with an idea, you know, she's the first one to know about it. Um, and then I kind of... I guess can be like her second eye sometimes on yeah. designing some of the cakes, but yeah, I don't, yeah, the pastry world, not my thing. <laughs> not your thing? No, not even in the least. Are you doing this solo, the the pastries? Um, So right now I started it as solo. Um, I've got two people who work with me now. Okay. Yeah. So slowly but growing. You design everything and... Yeah. Yeah. So I meet with the clients and then I draw up their sketches and then I create their, you know, wedding cakes for them. And then I've got a baker and then another woman who handles all the emails and that front side of the business. Yeah. How long have you been doing that? Um, So I've owned Ice for three years now, but I've been in the wedding industry for about five, 
So, yeah. <laughs> so you like that, right? It's got to be exciting yeah. to always be dealing with weddings and things like this. Yeah, it is exciting. It's exciting to be a part of somebody's big day and, you know, really get to help make an impact on it. It's sure. fun. <laughs> so it's more weddings, but we do birthday cakes and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. So our main focus is weddings. We do birthday cakes and occasion cakes and some corporate events as well. Okay. It's keeping you busy? Oh, yes. Very yes, cool. Yes. <laughs> Very cool. And uh, the Pizzeria Grata, how yeah. how new is this? So uh, our soft open, let me see, our anniversary is the 5th. So our soft open started November 8th. Mm-hmm. Um, and then our our grand open was December 6th, I believe. Okay. Um, so we since the grand open, it's just been, like, what is that, two, two months, months now? Yeah. Um, so still brand really new. brand new. Yeah. yeah, still getting our footing. Sure. Um, but it's been great. It's, you know. We've gotten a lot of um, really great support from the neighborhood. And just to, to clear up your your first dilemma is that battling that you're in a gas station. Yeah, yeah. And so we, we're used to the revolving, you know, gas station plate of exactly. pizza. Exactly. Yeah, or like the hot dogs on a roller. And, exactly. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, that you never want to go near. No. No, you don't no, touch no. those yeah, with poles. That's, that's, oh, a no. desperate, that's a desperate case you've got to be in to, to be looking at those stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's it's been really cool, you know, because – you know, most of the people that come to us are like, this is really cool. Like, this is like so unexpected. Congratulations. So happy. You know, the huge supporters. It's amazing. You know, and then you definitely get the people who kind of walk in, don't know who we are, um, are just kind of like, oh, gas station pizza. They'll like look at our menu and just walk away, you know, like not even acknowledge Mm -hmm. us kind of thing. So, you know, but it's, those are the people that I'm here to, not to prove wrong, but to kind of change the perception, right? Of like, why can't you get quality food in a convenient location? Sure. You know, what's what's the big deal about it? And couldn't be more convenient. You're right, right off 290. I mean, how many people are commuting there? If people know yeah. about you there. Yeah. Pull over, get a good slice of pizza while they fill up their tank. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's not a bad gas station either as far as the beer no. selection and whatnot. Yeah, great craft beer selection. Um, amazing wine selection, honestly. Um, really incredible selection of reds. Um, and then like all the snacks you can dream of, they've got all kinds of stuff in there. It's really cool. Very cool. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, a booze. Yeah. Let's take a second to hear from our sponsors. <laughs> Ranch Rider Spirits. These are really good. Yeah. They're really good. I gotta, I gotta, uh, I gotta talk to Mike, the GM over at the convenience store and see if he'd be interested in something like this. Cause these are, so they are, they do have tequila. So I don't know if he can sell them there. Even though it's. It's a lower alcohol. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's that's I guess the thing. So we won't TABC see these in loop. HEB or anything. But Got specs, it. they're in specs, and they're in. Uh, they probably by the time this goes up, they'll be in Twin Liquors. But they're at most local, local gas or not gas stations, um, liquor stores. Yeah, that's that's amazing. They're so really you're great. drinking the ranch water, and you've got the tequila plum. Yes. What do you think? They're really good. Yeah, I, I'm they're refreshing. A fan. I'm yeah. a fan. They're growing on me. Yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, no, they're great. So there you go. Thank you, Ranch Rider Spirits. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the two months old—that's that's that's crazy. And has it been crazy? Yeah. You know, it's we have. I mean, you know, there's peaks and valleys, right? Um, you know, for the most part, we can expect Thursday, Friday, Saturday to be like the ramp up. You know, really busy, just like you know any kind of normal food service operation. Um, we're closed Monday, Tuesday, so Sunday and Wednesday tend to be the slower days. Um, and we're just trying to figure out, you know, like our Monday and Tuesday, the right days to be closed. You know, maybe it's Sunday, Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, you know, maybe Monday's the big takeout pizza night for a lot of families in the neighborhood and we're we're just not touching those clients. So yeah, it's just trying to figure out the neighborhood and, you know, respond to the market because if, if there's one thing I'm not as stubborn, you know, and in no way am I set in my ways. And, you know, if, if a lot of our customers say we should be open on Monday as well, then we'll we're going to figure out a way to be open on Mondays and be there for them. Sure. You know, how was the actual, um, getting this up and rolling between the two of you guys? Cause you're, <laughs> you've got your business. Uh, I, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, well, so it was kind of an interesting story about how it all came about. Um, I was in Lakeway running a restaurant out there for about a year and a half. The hops and, and times. Hops and time. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was brought on as their executive chef before they opened. So, you know, built the first menus, trained the staff, kind of set all the standards and procedures and things like that and got it off the ground. Um, and, you know, Lakeway's, Lakeway's a cool town. Um, it's just not conducive to restaurants. Um, you know, there's not a huge staffing and talent pool to draw from there. Um, 
you know, and it's it's next to impossible to get people to drive from Austin into Lakeway for work. You know, they, were you residing here? I was in Oak Hill. Oh, wow. Yeah, so That's I was kind of commute. yeah. So it was about twenty twenty five minutes each way, um, and yeah, so it was just kind of like a constant battle to keep staff and. Um, I was just working absurd hours, you know, it was like 80 hours a week for eight or nine months straight. Um, wow. yeah. And it just kind of all came crashing down. Um, you know, I was dealing with a little bit of anxiety and depression and, um, our marriage was a little bit rocky to say yeah. the least. Well, those hours will do all yeah. those things. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Checks all those boxes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so, so in that respect, opening this has got to be a, a little bit better, although yeah. I'm, I'm oh, gu- yeah. guessing it comes... Go. Well, it's yeah, continue. <laughs> yeah, it's got, it it, <laughs> sure. it's got its financial strain, right? Because you know, my pay, you know, res, you know, it revolves around the sales that we do. You know, I'm not going to take more money than I really can out of the business. So smart move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, so there's ebbs and flows there, but you know, as far as the hours and the stress and everything, it's next to zero. You know, I'm I'm working really sixty hours at the most a week. Um, and it's low impact, low stress, you know, we keep the menu small on purpose and it's been, it's been really amazing. You guys are both fans of pizza, I'm assuming. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yes. What, uh, what was the initial reasoning? Why? When was it start? When did it start percolating? So, uh, <laughs> it, it started percolating when, uh, my business partner, um, Diego, who was a friend of the GM at Hobson time, it's how we met. Um, he kind of just came to me and was like, Hey, um, there's this kitchen space. It's in a gas station. I just want to bring you in and kind of like... First thoughts when you heard that. <laughs> uh, first thoughts were like hot dogs on a roller and, yep. um, okay. yeah, yeah, and yeah. you know, revolving yeah. pizza. That was that was my immediate reaction. Um, but he wanted me to kind of come in as a consultant and figure out what could be done with the space. Um, so the initial thought was commissary kitchen, um, you know, for food trucks. Okay. Um, like a low income or not low income, low rent commissary kitchen. Yeah. Um, you know, because there are a lot of those kitchens out there that cost a fortune, sure. you know, and unfortunately... And they're required. For and they're required, mm-hmm. exactly. Um, so that was the initial thought. And then we went and looked at the space and uh, the pizza oven was already there. Right. So um, I, I still don't know the full story, but somebody tried to open up a Neapolitan pizzeria. Um, oh, it didn't work out. Oh, like the gas station instead either, of the gas station? Either, yeah, either the gas station did or somebody else did. I, I don't know the full story about how the kitchen got built out or that okay. kind of stuff, but... Um, yeah, it was a you know sixteen thousand dollar pizza oven from California sitting in there. That's and awesome. Go, it had just gone unused <laughs> yeah. for several years. What is that ceramic? Is it made out of? Or? So uh, it's a it's a fire brick inside. Um, there's a small gap for air circulation, and then it's uh, stucco with ceramic tile on the outside as the outer shell. Okay. Yeah. Um, so gas and wood combo. So we're able to use um, a little bit of gas in the morning to help light the wood, and then we you know rely on the wood for the rest of the day to get our heat and smoke. Very cool. So yeah. you saw that your eyes lit up. Yeah. Well, it just kind of seemed silly to do anything but that with the space. It was like, why would we pay to remove this oven? And right. try to sell it when we could just do what it's meant to do. Um, so that was where it all came about, and it kind of went from there. Sure, you know. Uh, th- did you have any say in this? This the pizza <laughs> pizza idea? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean we we definitely discussed it a lot, and you know decided if it was meant to be, or you know if it was in the cards. And uh, Nate had made a lot of comments when he was you know on getting ready to leave Hobson time that he was looking for maybe more simpler food, more food that you know makes your heart happy. Sure. Um, and you know when we discovered the pizzeria in the gas station and he came to me, it was, you know, okay, is this, you know, what you want to do? Is this something that you're interested in? Yes, this would be a hundred percent that type of food. Yeah. Um, you know, so we did talk about it and, you know, when pushing it came to shove and, you know, we, you know, met with Diego and his girlfriend and all of that, we were like, okay, you know, this, this could definitely be something that could be a really cool thing. I mean, yeah. who goes to a gas station to get Neapolitan pizza Right. and it's Austin. If it's weird, it's cool. So yeah. and no, and I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, quality pizza, it's, that's yeah. never a bad thing. Yeah. No. And, and, you know, we're really careful to kind of, you know, do that right where, it's like we're not just making good pizza. You know, we're using great ingredients. We're using, you know, flour from Barton Springs Mill and olive oil from Texas Olive Ranch, you know, down in, I believe, their southwest Texas. Um, you know, as much local produce as we can get our hands on and, you know, but still maintaining that price point where we're, you know, friendly for the neighborhood. Yeah. You know? And you said most of the people who are coming in are actually carrying out. Yes. Yeah. Most people uh, will call us to place an order for pickup. Is What's that how it neighborhood goes. there? 
Um, truthfully, I don't know the name of the neighborhood that yeah. we're in. Well, you, um, should, it, you should figure it out and yeah. <laughs> make a pie after that. Right? Yeah. Right. yeah, but it's been really cool. Um, you know, we, we also, when we were opening, um, you know, basically hit the pavement um, and we sent out flyers to every house in the neighborhood offering, you know, a free pizza, just to introduce ourselves, like no strings attached, just come in, grab a pizza. You got it's repeat yours. offenders? Uh, we had a few attempts. <laughs> yeah. No, no. I mean, do you got regular customers? For oh, that? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we did. We did I, have some I guess people I might have tried that multiple too. Pizzas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's been really great, you know, and then just kind of hitting the businesses and, you know, setting up catered lunches and doing that kind of stuff. And, you know, because I think a lot of a lot of businesses now, you know, they rely on social media and all of that stuff, but you know, they don't actually go out and shake hands and introduce themselves. And I think it's a really important thing to be able to do. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I'm going to agree with that. Yeah, there's nothing like human interaction. Yeah, I mean, social media goes a long way. It's basically a necessity today. Yeah, yeah. to do it without it is, I don't know. It's it's out. You can't. No, no, mm -hmm. you can't. Yeah, and there's and there's so many you know, influencers now. And there's, there's so many different ways to get your name out there. It's, you have know, you had any of these, uh, um, a couple have, like sushi um, girl and all the so sushi girl. <laughs> I'm trying to get a hold of, um, but, uh, ATX fit foodie, um, okay. came out, we did a giveaway with her for a pizza party, which was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's also just kind of like trying to give yourself a big enough presence to get the attention of, you know, the bigger and bigger people because, you know, a lot of these big restaurants that open up, you know, they have the money for like a marketing team and a PR person that, you know, knows somebody right. that knows somebody else. And, you know, so we started with, without that. And, yeah. You know, people, so we're just, people with pockets. I mean, yeah. the investors and yeah. ways to get those things done. Yeah. And nothing against them. It's great. You know, no. if you have the opportunity to do it, do it. Oh yeah. Um, but, you know, we just didn't have that. So, you know, we're just starting kind of from ground zero with that, but sure. it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. The one thing, do you know? Not to be uh, the the pessimistic yeah. guy, but if you if it does really catch fire, that gas gas station could be completely packed one day on yeah. a Friday night. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like, so gotta be prepared for that. Yeah, <laughs> and and we are. I mean, to an extent, um, you know, not that I ever want to, not that I ever want to, you know, run out of food, um, but you know, based on the storage space that we have, yeah, I can only actually have about two hundred and twenty to two hundred and fifty pizzas like the dough balls on hand at okay. a time all right yeah so um which uh thank you again for helping my daughter out there. yeah <laughs> she had a blast with that and then no, parting with the dough now that i'm hearing about yeah <laughs> she had fun yeah no, that's awesome I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it and yeah so you know um you know maybe one day we will be that place that you know every night we're selling out a pizza um but you know if that's the case we're definitely going to kind of explore other options whether it's you know a refrigerated connex in the back or a commissary kitchen or you know some way to kind of handle the uh you know the demand sure and this kind of came out of uh you know diego showed you the space mm -hmm. and so it wasn't like an idea that you kind of like had let's start a, a pizza pizza place in a gas station so no and, and, and it's great, though. And yeah. it's great. So what happens if it is successful? Do you want to do like a brick and mortar or something like that or a trailer? So a lot of people have been asking me that. Um, Not to jump the gun. No. Because what you're doing is really neat. Yeah. I mean, truthfully, you know, I I worked at a lot of high volume type restaurants, you know, the 180 to 250 seat places. Yeah. And um, I don't know if it's just the environment that I was in. Bless you. Excuse me. Thank no, you. You're good. Um, I don't know if it was just the people I was with or the environment or you know, the stress and the workload, but, um, I kind of fell out of love with that kind of thing. A little, um, little PTSD. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm okay with admitting that for sure. Um, so I think that if Pizzeria Grotto were to grow into something else, we would either go and find another small space, you know, where we can kind of be like a niche place. Um, or we would go into like a mobile truck, um, yeah. something like that. Um, cause I just, I really like being able to be there and touch the product and, you know, not worry about is my dishwasher going to show up? Is my prep guy going to be here at six o'clock in the morning? Sure. You know, those added, you know, necessities, you know, when it comes to having a bigger place like that. Sure. You know. So you you mentioned some of these places you've worked. If you don't mind, yeah, let's let's rewind a mm -hmm. bit and just yeah, sure. Uh, you, so you're originally you're from New York. I'm from New York, yeah, Orange yeah. County, New York. And you're making pizza here now, so that's a good thing, Austin. <laughs> yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's <laughs> a little round of applause. Yeah. For you. So you, you you started in New York as a child. Where you uh, did you get into cooking? Yeah, um, at a young age, or 
sort of. Um, it really started, you know, both of my parents worked and I have two younger brothers. Um, so my first times cooking were really, you know, like my mom was on the phone with me and I was standing on a step stool by the stove putting together dinner with her instruction while she was driving home. No kidding. Yeah. So it was like the first the first dish that I remember cooking was this like rice chicken casserole with like Campbell's cream of mushroom soup that you just like pop in the oven. And, you know, that was it. Yeah. Um, and then it just kind of escalated from there. And I always had an interest in it. But um, when I was getting close to graduating high school, I was considering like Johnson & Wales or CIA or, you know, that stuff. But um, I ended up opting to uh, go to the University of Buffalo in uh, Western New York and um, spent a year and a half there. Did the whole thing, joined a fraternity and For, for what? And, what were you going to study? I, truthfully, I don't even remember. Yeah. I think I, in the year and a half <laughs> I was there, I think I went to like literally 10 classes. Um, I was just so disinterested, so You're unmotivated. I was just having fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, and that was it. And uh, That I, time of your yeah. life, you really weren't cooking like as part-time things? Not or? at all. Okay. Not at all. Um, I'd worked in restaurants um, prior just like as a busboy server, dishwasher, stuff like that, but hadn't been cooking like professionally, you know, really by any means. Um, and then after a year and a half, I dropped out and um, spent a couple of semesters in a community college um, back by my parents' house um, in like the hospitality and culinary um, field there. And then uh, I went to CIA and that was, that was what really kickstarted it. In New York? Yes. Yeah. Hyde Park. Um, I grew up about an hour south of Hyde Park. So it was, uh, it was pretty easy. And and you've learned a lot, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there's always that debate about, you know, whether culinary school is right and which culinary gonna, school to go to. I was going to gonna ask. Yeah. yeah. And, Your you know, opinion. the thing is, it's it's what do you want out of it? And are you going to put everything into it? You know, like the CIA in New York, it's, it's the largest, I'm trying to remember what the statistic is, or it's the second largest collection of cookbooks in the world in their library. Yeah. The only the only collection larger is actually in the Library of Congress, I believe it I is. So. Wow. So it's, and it's on campus and it's free to take books out. You know, there's no late fees for any student, you know, so you have this unbelievable wealth of knowledge accessible to you and every chef there, you know, is like a Michelin starred chef and, you know, they're literally there because they want to teach you. Um, you know, so there were a lot of kids who kind of went and, you know, didn't have much direction and it was kind of like they were there because they didn't know what to do. Um, and then there were the kids, you know, like myself and like Alana who were, you know, really dedicated to learning the craft and wanted to get a lot out of it. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, it all depends. And, you know, what I always tell people about the CIA is you don't just learn how you learn the why, you know, all of the chefs are extremely knowledgeable about the science behind everything. Sure. You know, so it's not like, hey, you put, you know, chicken in a pan with hot oil to sear it because it tastes good. It's like, well, here's like what's happening on a molecular level to cause that. Yeah, yeah. So it it kind of helps you to develop a much deeper understanding of cooking. Sure. Yeah. Very cool. And, and before we continue with mm -hmm. you, and you're from California? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how about you? At a younger age, were you into the pastries or cooking or anything? <laughs> yeah. So I always, I grew up baking with my mom. How old? Uh, since uh, there's photos of me, I was like two year old. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, she, she was born into it. Yeah. And stuck? Okay. Yeah. My mom grew up in a Jewish family. So food is very important always. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was, I always baked with my mom as a kid. I grew up. What and, were you guys baking? Uh, right. Sugar cookies and cakes and all the different desserts for all the Jewish holidays always. And, nice. you yeah. know, all of that. And I fell more into the baking. She's more of a cook. Um, and then I, you know, the Food Network came out with all the cool baking shows back in the day when they had like all the gastronomy and all the cool information on it. And I fell in love with Bronwyn Weber. And, you know, when Duff came out with Ace of Cakes, he went to CIA. And that's how I found out about it. And I was okay. like, I'm going to go there. Okay. And my parents were like, I was 12 years old. And they're like, yeah, that's hilarious. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. But I started baking cakes for the kids in the neighborhood and selling at, at them. At 12. Yep, that's at 12 awesome. years. Yeah, yeah, 12 years old. Yeah, my parents really believed in me. And they were like, okay, you want to do it? Cool. Like, we'll do it. Like, they nicknamed, they were like, it's going to be Ilana's Cakery and <laughs> all yeah, nine. Yeah. And my dad still to this day sticks by that name. Well, um, I think he still owns the domain for <laughs> yeah, the website, I'm actually. Sure he does. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How supportive. How cool. Yeah, yeah. I know my parents are super supportive of it. And yeah, and then through high school, I took culinary classes and baking classes, whatever I could get, you know, my hands on. I, you know, worked in catering through high school and uh, worked. It. I couldn't get into any bake shops in California just because of the crazy laws there. 
But, um, you uh, know. Oh, because your age at the yeah, time? Yeah, because of age. Yeah, because you couldn't be, you had to be 18 to oh. work in like a kitchen there. Why? What's the reasoning? I, it's California. Something <laughs> something safety. Yeah, related, it's probably. like a safety thing, an insurance thing. Like it's just, yeah. Okay. So it was fine, but I worked in restaurants instead. You can work in a restaurant. And I guess oh, they don't okay. care. So <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. It seems like the restaurants would be more dangerous than the, the bakery. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. But I think restaurants are just like, yeah, you can hold the knife. You got it. So, <laughs> so, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I worked in restaurants. I did pastry and like garmage basically in high school and then uh, found out about CIA and basically applied. It was the only college I applied to. What, where at? Uh, so the CIA in Hyde Park. Okay. Yeah. So This same, is where you guys met? Yes. yes. This is where we met. Yeah. Yeah. Kid. yeah. So we met at school, but yeah, I applied there and my mom was like, you sure you don't want to apply anywhere else? And I was like, if I don't get in this time, I'll reapply again next time. And, you know, I was like, it's the best and I want to go to the best college. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it right. And yeah, so that's how we, you know, so I ended up going there. I started probably about six months after Nate started. We didn't know each other at the time. Um, met him through actually my roommate at the time there. Uh, it's a crazy program. Uh, new kids come in every three weeks. So okay. my roommate left like six months after I started. It's so like continuously they're getting oh, okay. new people in. It's yeah, like a really yeah. weird, you know, non-normal college situation. So when you guys go to the CIA, I'm not familiar with, do mm-hmm. you sign up for certain a curriculum or is it yeah. just? So it's, it's an accredited university. So you actually, like when you have like an associate's or a bachelor's from the CIA, it's an, it's an accredited degree. Um, so not only do you have like your cooking classes and things like that, but you have your other kind of like gen ed classes, but they all relate back to the culinary field. So, um, you could either go for an associates in culinary arts or baking and pastry. Um, but then you're taking, you know, your math classes, culinary math. So you're learning how to cost out menus and how to determine, you know, yields on prepped items. Yeah. You know, in your history Valuable classes. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, in your history classes, gastronomy. So learning about, you know, all of the classics and, you know, so they, they make sure to, you know, apply the culinary industry, you know, at every level of the classroom. Sure. Where did you guys actually cross paths there? <laughs> um, so I was I was dating a girl at the time who I had met at the um, community college program I was in, um, and we both went to CIA together, and we were together, and it was not a healthy relationship to okay. say the least. Sure. Um, and we kind of became friends with Alana's roommate, um, this girl, Brittany, who's actually in Austin as well. Mm-hmm. I believe she's a GM at uh, La Volpe in the Cedar Door oh. um, downtown. Cool. I go there often. Yeah. Her name Brittany by any chance? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Brittany. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it was her roommate in college. Um, and um, we just, I don't know if it was like a party or because you were kind of dating someone also at the time. It was a very weird. Like, yeah, it was a weird situation. But yeah, he would come. He worked at a pizzeria and he'd come over and bring my roommate all the time pizza. Just like pop by. Hey, like, you know, whatever. And then she ended up leaving because her like time at CIA yeah. was done for her first <clears throat> semester. And he was still around and his girlfriend at the time was still around. So I like switched over to like the other, her side of the room. Cause it was like better. It was by the window. And I was talking to his girlfriend. And I was like, Oh yeah. Like I'm trying to put all my stuff up. Like, why don't you and Nate come over? Like, you know, we'll hang out, have some pizza, put together the room, like whatever. So they, they both came over and we were all like hanging out and whatever. And, you know, I didn't think anything of it. And, you know, I knew the relationship was whatever, but You know, I was like, that's fine. You know, we'll all be friends. No big deal. So, yeah, then we were friends. We became friends for, you know, the next like two, two months, I think, that he was there until he went on to his externship and I was still at school. Oh, you were still there. Yeah. So I was still at school for an additional two months. It was a couple months, yeah. Two months. And he was gone. Um, And then... I get a text because he actually moved in with my old roommate in Florida is where he did his externship. Okay. And I get a text from her like, hey, there's this guy down here who like has a crush on you. And I'm like, you're oh. in Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's how that works. <laughs> like that's yeah. weird. And, and disclaimer, uh, the girl that I was with at the time and I had broken up by the yes. time this happened. This wasn't sure. like yeah. a, you know, <laughs> yeah. just but, want to put that so, out there. But you, 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 you felt something and. You yeah, had, you had a crush. I had a crush. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I was like, I was like the shy guy who, you know, like this girl that I was had been dating. It was like my first, like you know, real kind of like a relationship that I had had. It wasn't, you know, I and like the, dated girls a little bit in high school, but it was never anything like serious. And it turned out it wasn't even that healthy. So right, Good yeah. So it was for the best. It. Yeah. yeah, it was yeah. for the best. Um, so I got I got her number um, from the roommate with Alana's permission. And then, uh, I, and I'll, I'll admit it. The first text that was sent from my phone to Alana, I did not type. 
Um, okay. I just, I was in that like weird, like, I don't even know how to begin this conversation, but, <laughs> but yeah, we started talking and, um, from, from Florida, New York, from Florida, New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. We just started texting and talking on the phone and, um, yeah, it started from there. And then that's actually how we wound up in Austin was Alana did her externship at Swedish Hill. Yeah. Um, Swedish Hill. Okay. Yeah. MMH. No, before, before, before it was MMH. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. When, it was, when it was owned by Jim. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Cause that you guys, so that was 2014. You, you all graduated. Yes, yeah, so we graduated 2014, 2014 yeah. yeah. And then moved down here together. Okay. Um, so, okay, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. <laughs> kind of a convoluted story. But. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's not that bad. Where, so with the externship in uh, Florida, I got to ask, where, mm-hmm. where was that and why? So I was working in uh, Sarasota um, for a um, kind of, it was a joint catering company and restaurant called Madison's 41. It's like kind of the local celebrity chef down there, Paul Madison. Okay. Um, had this like huge catering company and. Um, at the time that was what I was interested in catering. I was interested in catering and private events and things like that. That was where I thought I kind of wanted to go. But she mentioned bringing in this pizza Mm -hmm. all the time. So have you always had a passion for pizza? I've always had a passion for eating it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I can relate. Yeah. I mean, in New York, you know, there's, there's a plethora, you know, every, every time. I mean, the, the, the town that I grew up in is, is a literal village. It's actually a village inside of a town. It's tiny. Interesting. Um, and we had in our village, three pizzerias. Nice. And it's, they were all always busy, very, all very successful businesses. Um, there's just no shortage. Oh yes. You've had a passion for pizza. Yeah. As we all do. Yeah. And same, same for you. Oh, I love pizza. Yeah. Italian food is like I could eat that breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. Right, Easy. shouldn't, but oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so cool. So, but then in the back of your mind, did you ever know that you were going to end up opening a, a pizza place? No, you know, I. What were your th- thoughts then? So, so from Sarasota, you know, in catering, and I really enjoyed it. But, um, you know, I decided to come back to school, finish out my degree. Um, and then the CIA has, um, before you can graduate, they have an intensive wine program. So it's three weeks. And basically by the end of the class, they say, if you got a B or better in the class, you could potentially pass your level one and level two SOM exam. Like that's how, that's how intense their curriculum is. What did that involve? Tasting, pairing? Tastings, pairings. Learning about just the regions? and the, yeah. the regions, the, okay. the local laws in different regions, how to identify the grapes. You know, we, they really dive into it. Um, did you pass? B, yeah, to beat with a B. Yeah, so I did up with like I think a B plus because I fudged a couple of the trick questions on the uh, on the final. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know then you go into restaurants. So the last uh, I guess it's twelve. Yeah, the last twelve weeks of class there, you spend um, your time six weeks in two different restaurants that are actually on campus serving the public. Okay. Yeah. So at the time that we were there, there were three restaurants. Um, there's Bocus, which uh, used to be the Escoffier room. So that's like the French room, um, but it was, you know, all kind of based in molecular gastronomy and, you know, modern fine dining. Um, and then there's American Bounty, which is what it sounds like, you know, kind of classic fine dining American food. And then there's Caterina de' Medici, which was uh, Italian. Um, and you could choose which two restaurants you wanted to work at. Um, and you would spend three weeks in each restaurant in the kitchen and then three weeks in the front of house after you would learn the menu and the food. Um so by the time I got out of there, I was like, okay, no, like I want to go into like fine dining. You know, this, I really loved it. Okay. Um, and that's kind of what brought me down to foreign and domestic. Um, when I moved down here, it was like the restaurant that I think I I resonated with their um, their menu the most. Because yeah, it's been brought up that we don't really have like a fine dining scene here. No. Okay. You would agree? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I think um, when I moved down here, you know, there was the old barley swine on South Lamar. Um, There was Key at the time on 6th. Um, You know, Restaurant Congress on 2nd in Congress um, from David Bull and LaCortia. And while very elevated, these aren't fine dining. Right. It's Yeah, it's not like the Michelin star of like New York and things like that. But, but, you know, the, the, the quality of food I think was always there. I think that the city itself just wasn't ready. Um, and I'm not sure that it ever will be, and that's okay, um, you know, for that level of service and, you know, those kind of things. Because at the time, the Michelin system was very much based on, you know, food, decor, ambiance, how expensive are your plates? You know, are the toilets in your bathroom plated with gold? It's like, right. you know, very kind of, a lot of it was a very materialistic type of, you know, sure. grading system. Um, you know, and so we knew that we were coming to Austin, um, you know, so I started kind of looking for like, What's the closest thing that I can get to a fine dining restaurant? Yeah. Um, now we had Uchi at the time, right? Uchi yes. was there. Yeah, it was funny though. Uchi actually never came up in any of my searches. Okay, because um, that like, was like 
well, it still might be like the thing that comes up in your search if you're coming here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, it's Uchi and Uchi Co are two of our favorite restaurants in town. Um, anytime Super people good. ask like, for a nice so meal. Good. yeah, Just we, there, right? If you're not from here, go there. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. It's yeah. a go-to. Oh, yeah. yeah, 100%. Um, but yeah, so I, I, and I was at Foreign and Domestic very briefly. I mean, I was only there for like six months um, before I, you know, left. And um, How'd you like that? <laughs> um, <laughs> so at the time, it was owned by Ned Elliott. Um, he was the chef owner. Um, there were a couple. Now it's on, oh, husband, and wife. Is that right? Uh, boyfriend, girlfriend. Boyfriend, uh, girlfriend. So Nathan Lemley and Sarah Hurd, um, who came from Parkside. Okay. Um, yeah. Or Parkside Projects. I'm not sure if they were both actually at Parkside on Sixth, but um, yeah. Um, you know, um, Ned had a little bit of a reputation, um, and oh yeah, you know, was he a pot thrown chef? Um, <laughs> yeah, his uh, his management style didn't mesh well with what I needed at the time. Okay, I'll put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, we I worked with some pretty incredible people there, and um, you know, those connections have have uh, been you know really great to have over the last couple of years, especially with the pizzeria. Now, um, there was a girl there, Krista, who um, she's at Facebook now cooking, uh, but she was at Pitchfork Pretty um, when they opened, and up until I think about a month or two ago. Um, and, and now she's at Facebook. Now she's just at Facebook. for the last month. Yeah, for the last month or two. Is um, she the third and Shoal, Sixth Street Domain? I have no idea, to be uh, honest with you. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're building an empire. It's here. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but um, but her husband um is the chef de cuisine at Apis in Spicewood. Oh yeah, that's and way out there. Way out there. <laughs> yeah, and they have uh, Pizzeria Sorolina on campus. Um, so when the when the pizzeria thing came about, I reached out to Mike and asked if I could pull some shifts at the pizzeria, and that's kind of how I got my hands wet with the. Uh, Oh, with Neapolitan pizza down here, yeah, that was kind of like my my learning ground. Uh, the the Apis that's is that a game game meets? Is or, no, do I have that? Um, so I mean, they do a little bit of. I, don't, I wouldn't consider it game. I mean, they use some uh, some like locally harvested um, product. Um, their pork comes from a, a farm out there called Terra Purezza. Okay, um, and it's so, unbelievable. Sorry. I think the food they're doing is yeah. fantastic. Um, it, yeah, that's more. It's a really elevated, right? Yeah, I've yeah. never been there, but I've heard it's great. Yeah. I mean, their their namesake Apis comes from the fact that they're actually an apiary. Um, they actually have their own um, honeybees, so they harvest their own honey and honeycomb and kind of utilize it in different ways on their menu. Um, I, I pretty bet, incredible place. I bet I could do that. After the first time, but I'd be terrified. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, how? <laughs> yeah, I never, I never had the guts to approach the hives or anything like that. But oh, it's, it's pretty amazing out there. Yeah, and it's, yeah. it's a beautiful property that they have, and the staff is absolutely incredible. They're, they're all amazing people. Oh, well, very cool. Yeah. But that, that, and then that kind of got, got the bug. Yeah. Well, that was, well, that was like, kind of where I was like, okay, you know, I've made pizza before. Um, I'm not 100 percent familiar with Neapolitan pizza. You know. Grew up on New York style pizza. Yeah. Um, so I just reached out to them and I was like, hey, you know, can I just come in on like Friday and Saturday nights and, you know, stretch dough and work the oven a little bit and just kind of, you know, learn how you guys are doing it so I can, like, you know, kind were of. Were you staging over there? To an extent, yeah. I mean, like they were paying me because they were, they okay. were shorthanded. Um, so, you know, I was making a little bit of money. But, um, yeah, it was basically just to kind of learn that style of the craft, you know, because like Via 313 has a very specific way, obviously, of cooking their pizza, Yeah, you know, and, and Neapolitan is kind of its own animal with like the wood fire and elevated temperatures and things like that. So um, very different way of cooking. And did you learn it alone? No. So um, they have a guy running, um, they have a guy running the pizzeria named Matt, who's from like the Vespaio t um, team. Um, he worked for McGuire Mormon um, for a little Matt. while. Matt, is he... How long has he been out there? Um, I want to say about a year now, okay. something like that. Yeah. Um, so he's kind of responsible for the day to day at the pizzeria, um, and then they have another guy that they hired who was like a local out there to to help out. Um, but it's a cool concept, you know. You come up and order at the bar. Um, they're building an outdoor bar, but at the time it was only like three taps with like a craft cocktail on tap, um, and then basically they just give you a number, and when everything's ready, they come and find you. Okay. Um, so yeah. when you're out on 71 mm -hmm. and you hit like Angel's Ice House and that keep going. Jay, how how far? <laughs> um, just a few more minutes <laughs> past that. Okay. It's yeah. So if, it's if you kind of go around the bend, um, there's like Pooty's Roadhouse. Um, and if you go a little bit farther down the road, it's on the right hand side. There's like a traffic light with a gas station. This and they're is just on the other side okay. of the light. Yeah. The, both of those are there. The yep, yeah. Going. They're on the same property. Yeah. They're just like cool. kind of across from each other. Oh, now I'm intrigued. Yeah. I have to go out there. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah, really it's cool, cool place. I'm halfway there when I go to my folks' house. So yeah. We'll, 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 we might try that out. Yeah. <laughs> well, very cool. And then all, all the while, what are you up to when you guys moved here? 
Uh, so yeah, when we moved down here, um, I went back to work for Swedish Hill. Um, Jim there was amazing. So he, you know, brought me back on and I worked there for about a year. Um, and then it was time to move on to a new cake company. I was ready to really focus on weddings since they are more, you know, occasion cakes at the time and all of that. Um, I started working at Lovebird Suites with um, a woman, Denise, there. We were just the two of us and we were busting out wedding cakes and I really got a home my craft there. Um, And she had to put her business on hold for medical reasons and basically stop her business after I'd been there for about a year and a half. Yeah. She's luckily doing much better now. I still keep in touch with her. And um, so it basically came to that point where it was like, um, we book clients, you're my right hand man, what do we do? And I was like, well, I guess I could start my own business. I don't know if I ever thought about this or it happening this soon, but... I guess if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Sure. Well, you you were doing it when you were 12. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, it, it was bound like, to happen at some point. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, it was one of those things I talked to him and, you know, I, you know, talked to my mom and I was like, um, what do I do? Like, I don't know. Like, you know, uh, the beginnings of owning your own business, you sure. know, I saw the work that she put in and. I was like, okay, I guess we're going to go for it and we're going to see what happens. And yeah, so that's basically when I started. It was a very quick, like, you know, I had like a month and she was like, okay, then I'm going to start sending you brides. So it was like a month to come up with a name wow. and get a website together, get a logo, get and colors. How was that time for you guys? I mean, what, what, were, you, <laughs> what, what were you, I mean, obviously you guys, you're supporting this. And- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing we've always been really good about is, is always supporting each other as long as you know, each other are happy. Um, did you, we did you really ever have to help with the, the, the cakes? Um, <laughs> I have, I've, uh, I've done, I've done a number of deliveries. Um, <laughs> I've, deliveries. I've been, oh, yeah. I've been known to me's, um, I haven't really done a whole lot of baking. I don't trust he myself. Do the yeah, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> won't let him or he doesn't. Oh, he tried once. He I tried used once. a tablespoon instead of a teaspoon of baking powder. Oh, yeah. Was, yeah. Yeah. I'm that kind of, I'm well, that kind of guy. At least it wasn't like salt and sugar. Yeah, yeah. 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 But basically, yeah, I just weigh out the flour and sugar and let her do the rest. Um, well, still even right. Yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, yeah, like we'll do, we'll do deliveries. You know, if she has like a really big order and you know needs you know an extra pair of hands, um, you know I've I've gone on deliveries with her and things like that. But um, so yeah, it's it's pretty much her. Yeah, when you do the deliveries, I know I, I'm I'm curious <laughs> about getting it all started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these these giant like tower cakes. <laughs> yeah, how does that? Um, I mean, that's got to be stressful. Yeah. So I always tell people, it's like, I love my job. I love what I do. But come wedding day, it is the most stressful day of my life. For sure, right? Uh, You know, because it's just you're dealing with the bride, dealing with delivering a cake. I mean, we put crazy supports, dowels, and all of that in all of our cakes. We dowel them. That's how it's done? And are they cold? Like they stay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we take them out of a 37-degree walk-in and basically transport it from there. And, you know, so it's all of our buttercream has all butter. So it's like sticking, taking a, you know, stick a fridge out of the butter or sorry, out of the refrigerator. And it's basically rock solid. Yeah. And that's how we transport all of our cakes. We put them in these super cool boxes that like basically keep the heat out. So to keep them cold, because we travel all the way out to Houston, to Denton, to Dallas area. Wow. Yeah. We've taken cakes really far. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever had anything happen? <laughs> we have not, thank God. We have oh had like, yeah, knock yeah, on wood. Yeah. <laughs> we have not. It is in our contract. God forbid it does happen. We drop a cake or something happens. You will have cake at your wedding. It might not be ours. It'll probably be from Costco or okay. H-E-B or somewhere. I was going to say, what would you do? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a of God clause, yeah. I mean, there's only so much you can do. You know, yeah. God forbid you get in an accident or somebody rear ends you or, you know, you can't control the environment sometimes and, oh, yeah. you you know, we've had we've had florists put their hands in cake when trying to put flowers on it, and Ugh, yeah. oh yeah. So you know, we we've had stuff happen, but most of the times the couples never know, and we make it look very pretty if anything sure. does happen. Sure. <laughs> and the cakes look gorgeous. Oh, I was, thank I was you. Perusing some photos. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah. So you get that up and going, and how how quickly? I mean, so you used kind of her clients. Yes. Well, they were your yours, you, the two of you. Yes. And she was kind of like, well, I can't do this. You take these. Which is very nice of her. Really, to do. yes, it was incredible. It was basically a springboard to which a business, is awesome, which right? is amazing. You know, I didn't have to deal with the hard part of starting a business, of getting your name out there, and you know, kind meeting of a blessing, people. Right? Oh, one hundred percent. We were beyond grateful for it. You yeah. know, it was a huge blessing. In disguise all of her kitchen equipment. She was like, "You can have it." Like she's like, you know, wow. we'll figure out a payment method later on. But she's like, "Don't worry about it. Start making money first. 
sure. which was like all I could ever ask for, you know. So and you said she's doing better now. Yeah, she's doing much better now. Um, she gets to spend more time with her family, which is amazing, and I know she's super happy about that. Does and she want to get back into it? I don't know. I don't think so. I okay. think she does it like she'll bake with cakes for her daughter, and like they bake together all the time. But It'd be funny if she was like, "All right, I'm, I'm done. I'll, I'm I'll take ready. it back now. I'm ready to take <laughs> it back. Switch the name. <laughs> yeah, like, we got to negotiate price on that yeah. for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that that is that is kind of amazing. So you guys are both sitting here right now, currently yeah. doing your own thing. Yes. And it yeah. just it got got to raise the question: Are are you ever going to do something together? Um, <laughs> or is this like a strategic know. thing where you guys are doing this? No, I mean, like we we've we've had a little bit of crossover, like at Hops and Time in Lakeway. Um, you know, she was making all the desserts. Oh, okay. you know, For us, yeah. And, you How'd know, you guys function like that. in that environment? Um, we work pretty well together. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's something that I'd want to do 40 to 60 <laughs> or 70 hours a week. Yeah. Um, I've had another, a guest on here, Sawyer and Co. I don't believe you're oh, that yeah. far up. No, not yeah. yet. But they, you know, she runs the front of the house and he runs the back of the house. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool. That's, that's that an amazing work. thing. Yeah. My, yeah. my, I don't have a, a partner here, but like if I, I need to be, I think at my own job. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's like a balance there. <laughs> there there's definitely a balance and. You know, what? that was one of the tricky things about Hops and Time when I was in Lakeway was, you know, I was working so much that, I mean, even on our weekends, you know, we were we were pretty Taking careful. Taking orders to, and stuff. Oh, are well, you it was, well, still we're, working together? Still working, you know, because, you know, I we always tried to take as much time off as we could together. Um, but, you know, like I was off Monday and Tuesday and, you know, Monday I'm a zombie because I sleep all day and yeah, I don't want to yeah. do anything. And then Tuesday is just chores and then you're back to work. So yeah. it wasn't a healthy weekend, you know, by any yeah. means. So yeah. I mean, you mentioned early on, mm-hmm. like you got – little depressed there and yep. i mean that's it's not easy these these hours that people put in no can uh no and can that's really wear on you yeah yeah and that's why it's amazing that there are people like you know kc and philip spear and Callie spear and you know there are people in, in our industry in austin that are really starting to you know take it by the horn and you know figure out better ways to live a life in the industry yes yes you know? yeah um, so how during that time did you mm-hmm. Get yourself out of the muck because it's not, you don't flip a switch and say, I'm going to rest today and I'm back on my feet tomorrow. Sometimes you rest that day and you find out, oh, this is, I'm I'm not good. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, so we had, there was a night where we, uh, we had a friend in town and, uh, stayed out a little bit too late, um, you know, and didn't, I I think my phone had died or something. And so I was like out of contact with her and she woke up in the middle of the night and I wasn't home and, you know, understandably she's freaking out and, you know, I didn't realize it, but like I came home and we must have like driven past each other on the road because like she literally got in the car and started driving around it looking was like for me. Four in the morning. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, all the bars are closed. Yeah. And you know, you drive home on Southwest Parkway, which is like a black, pitch black, no guardrail. Yeah. And it's all windy. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm yeah. like, okay, is he on the side of the road somewhere? Yeah. Or, you know, having a freak out moment. <laughs> yeah. And um, you know, I was I was home, I was safe, but she wasn't home. So I was like, you know, I in my head, I, was, I don't know. I think I was so tired, you know, that I was like, I didn't really think about it much. You know, I just kind of like got in the shower and like was getting changed and she comes home and, you know, it's like four o'clock in the morning. And we have this like blowout fight and, you know, obviously something's got to give. Um, so I sat down with her father, um, I think a day or two later, mm-hmm. and he put me in touch with a woman um, who he knows through a mastermind group um, who has become like my life coach. Okay. Um, so we, we've we met in person a few times. She lives in California. Okay. Um, but we talk on the phone every week, an hour a week. Um, Haha, that's cool. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, she's not like a certified therapist, nor is she, you know, really in that kind of practice. Um, life coaches are different, right? Different. Yeah. Um, they don't tell you, they don't even really tell you what, they, they give you things to make you do things. They, well, they, they, give you, they give you tools to kind of navigate your past um, and develop a healthier way of thinking for your future. Yeah. Um, so a lot of it was like, okay, like, what did you do? Let's figure out why, how do you feel? How did you feel when you were doing it? You know, and, and kind of learning to give myself the tools that I needed to, you know, navigate a stressful job. And, um, you know, she, she pulled me out of a depression and, you know, I, um, about how long do you think that take, uh, took roughly eight months, nine months. Wow. That's a good funk. It was, yeah. 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 And, you know, it was, um, it was really, really hard. Um, But, you know, we still talk. I mean, I literally talked to her two days ago. Um, I guess, yeah. Yeah. Tuesday. Cause I was, (laughs) I was at the pizzeria making dough and I had my headphones in and I was talking to her. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> and yeah, you know, she's amazing. Her name's Jesslyn. Um, and it's incredible. You know, um, it's kind of gotten me on this path where, um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who, you know, are trying to find something, um, some healthy outlet, you know, and um, what I've found is that for me, it's, it's just practicing gratitude every single day. It's, sure. you know, I wake up and I'm Pizzeria great. Pizzeria grata. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> grata. It's <laughs> exactly. the Italian translation for grateful. So um, it was a really big part of why we chose that name. And, um, you know, it's, it's, we are grateful to wake up every single morning. We are grateful to have a job to go to. We are grateful to be able to serve the customers that we serve. We are, we're just grateful to be here and, you know, we're grateful for whatever the future brings for us. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been great. Um, and I, I don't ever foresee not having her to talk to. It's, it's one of the single most important things in my week, um, to kind of get me through and, you know, we're able to talk about, you know, our relationship and, um, she's helped me navigate more than a few arguments that I've had with Alana. <laughs> right. Um, but you know, it always, we always come out on top together. Um, and it's, yeah, I, I couldn't recommend something like that more to people. And, you know, there are times where, you know, people are in something and, you know, it's not talking to someone, you know, is not something that they necessarily like resonate with. Um, you know, maybe it's a book, maybe it's an audio book, maybe it's going to a meeting or, you know, I mean, there's Ben's friends, there's, Ben's friends, there's yeah. a herd now from Cali. Um, I know, herd, yeah. um, we've got, um, there's so many outlets and I'm a broken record saying this, but I yeah. love it. The Commodore run club. Yeah. If you need it's incredible. Get, some people, that's all they need. Yeah. A little meditative run. As yeah. soon as I'm in good enough shape to be able to go on a 5k, I'm going on a 5k with it's them. It's not that <laughs> far. You'll be fine. He says it's for everybody. <laughs> no, I know. I know. So I, I played, um, I played a little bit of hockey, um, when I was a kid, and um, I don't, I don't think they know what hockey is. Yeah, no, no. they don't. No, they yeah. don't. It's, what, it's, what is that? <laughs> All they know oh, is Mighty Ducks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, uh, we had uh, same same thing. Brandon yeah. and Zane. Yeah, they, they're into hockey. But yeah, it's from tricky. Yeah, yeah, sure. But um, yeah, no. So I get if I if I like run on pavement or do anything that's too high impact on my legs, I tend to get splints. Um, yes, yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's way too painful. So. Yeah, I invested in the Air Runner for that. Oh, yeah? yeah, is, yeah. It, is it good? Yeah, and a rower originally. Yeah. Rowers are amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's a so killer word. No, no impact and you can just go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. those are those are amazing. Um, and you can, you know, you when you do that, you build up your, your muscles. Yeah. So when you impact the pavement, you realize that you just need to build up some strength. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had a similar. I think it's situation. just a few more squats for me. Sure. <laughs> well, the pizza's not going to help. No, yeah, no. yeah I, I I've learned to uh, take whatever pizza toppings I might be craving and just putting it on a salad instead is what I've been doing lately. Well, so good job. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's dangerous, man. You know, I mean, it's very easy to just be like, oh, you know, this person's taking a little bit too long to pick up their pizza. I'll just make them a fresh one when they get here. You know, <laughs> it's. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm yeah. Sure. <laughs> so uh, so yeah the. Uh, all the trappings are still there. You know, all of, all of my bad habits that I had, I mean, even my cigarette smoking that I, you know, I used to be like a pack a day guy. Yeah. And, um, he's toned it down or he quit. Oh, I quit. Yeah. Good. No, I'm, I'm not smoking. I wouldn't date him if he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah. No, I, I quit. Um, well, even the, the food, you know, I mean, you know, God mm -hmm. bless pizza, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, if you're eating, if you're eating junk every day, you're not going to feel good. Mm -hmm. No, you know, yeah, it's an important aspect. Yeah, and I think, yeah, I think if you're eating junk all day, you also kind of forget what feeling good feels like. Yes, yeah, you know, and all of a sudden you start eating healthy, and you know, you have these cravings, and I mean, there are still times where I'm like, oh man, I could really use a cigarette. You know, it's been it's been years. Yeah, you know, but um, yeah, how many just, years have you smoked in Texas? Um, no, well, cigars and a little bit of pot. So you've with never you, had a cigarette in Texas? No. That's how I don't smoke because I've never had a cigarette here. You don't want to break that. that I street. don't want to break yeah. it. That's okay. right. no. We're in the same boat. Yeah, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no. So it's it's been it's been really good, and you know, it's just it's just being self aware enough to to recognize that you feel really good, and to recognize that these are the things that make you feel not as good, and you sure. know, and that that's at least how I look at it, you know, and how I get through it. Sure, and watching him go through that, I mean, I'm sure that's helpful. It builds a bond almost. Oh, yeah, 100%, you know, definitely helped, you know, us work together and, you know, really figure out, okay, like what is it that we need to do together to keep, you know, each other yeah. at a higher level and sure. keep it us at higher vibes and energies and all of that. Yeah, because, I mean, we never even had like a honeymoon phase in our marriage. Mm -mm. I mean, we got married November 5th, and a month later I signed on as executive chef at Hobson Time. And, okay. And we were off to the races. Okay. So, so you guys, mo when you moved here, then you ended up getting married not long after? Uh, we were together. Let's see. We got, well, we got married in 2017. Yeah. 
2017. So we were we were living together here for three years before we got married. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it was a crazy turn of events. I started my business and literally two months later he proposed. Wow. And it was just like, okay, wedding planning, business planning. Yeah. Like We're really bad at timing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know <laughs> if there's ever like a perfect slot no. and appropriate no. something always comes up. But when you're talking about working 80 hours, yeah. that's never fun. Right? No. No. Yeah. And I, and I think we're kind of past the point in the industry, or at least I hope that we're past the point in the industry where – you know, it shouldn't be bragging rights anymore. It shouldn't be like, oh, well, I just worked, you know, four clopins in a row and sure. I'm about to hit 85 hours and it's only Saturday. And, you know, it, like that that kind of stuff, the long-term effects of it just aren't worth it. You know, I would so much rather have a less stressful job and be able to go home to my family and be present on my weekends. Well, and you say long-term, um, and yes, when you experience, you know, eight months of kind of a depression, right. that seems like a long-term effect. But some of these things that we're doing today, you know, when you're 60 years old, that's that's the real long-term yeah. thing where, where, you know, no, 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 the lack of sleep for so many years really yeah. can catch up to you. And there's nothing you can really do at that point. No. no. You no. can't say I'm going to eat healthy today and go <laughs> for a run when you can't remember, you know, what's going on because yeah. whatever's going on. So, yeah, it's just that investment in yourself. That's sure. really what it is, you know, and, and people kind of hate when you say it like that, but it's, it's the truth. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I got uh, a question, well, I, I guess for you, when you make a cake, I guess, I guess nobody really just <laughs> makes a cake and eats it. Right. But do you ever just like, what's your go-to dessert? Uh, you you got to tell them about cake top. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me. What? All right. I'll tell you about cake top. So cake top is basically when you do make wedding cakes and celebration cakes, you cut off the top of the cake because oh. you want to have it flat. Okay. And but, you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I personally do not. I, okay. I'm not a cake person. Not um, a cake person. I'm not a cake person. <laughs> no, it's crazy. <laughs> but for him, my parents, like whoever, you know, I bring it home to, they love it. And it's basically because all the sugar is caramelized on the top of your cake top because all the caramel. It's, it's like all, the best part. Oh, it's the best part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's like the best part of cake. And it's like, you know, it gets thrown away half the time because wow. you don't use it. So you're spoiled with that. Yeah. Yeah. Every now and then <laughs> she'll leave a little bit for me. But it's so yeah. good because she, she's baking all the time. So, like. You know, if she if she left it out, uh, we'd just have pounds and pounds of cake top on our counter. And I mean, I, yeah. I'd eat it all. I, I'd be <laughs> up until four o'clock in the morning just munching on it, you know, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Or yeah. working on coming up with a product, something to use to do with it. Because I hate sure. throwing yeah. away food. It's Throw, like mix it in some ice cream. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. Good. And that's my thing. My ice cream is my go to. That's your go to? Oh, 100%. That's your jam. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ice cream is yes. good jam. What, Ben and Jerry's or like Hagen or? Oh, uh, like, Jenny's. 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 If you have not, they just opened one at the domain. And it's, they're opening on South Congress, yeah. too, I think. Okay, I feel like I've heard of it. But can you buy it in the store? Yep, you can buy it. I think Central Market has it. I don't know about H-E-B. They're Bramble. We even have it actually at the, at the convenience store, too. It's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, they got a Brambleberry oh, Crisp. No. That is All insane. this healthy talk, and I'm going to go get a pizza <laughs> and, and a pint of ice cream and drive home. With that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that, yeah, Jenny's is incredible. Right. Yeah. We found them, where were we, in Charleston when we went to Jenny's for the first time? Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah they're, they're making their... Uh, their waffle cones to order if you get in a cone. Oh, it's insane. It's, God. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a that magical place. ridiculous. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they call them half scoops, but they're really full scoops. So you can so do you that feel at the domain. Better. Yeah, the domain. Yeah, it's off uh, Rock Rose. Okay, because yeah. I'm trying to picture, because you've got Culinary Dropout, Paul Martin's, you've yep. got, and then we keep going, and there's that candy shop. Yeah, mm -hmm. so keep and going. And if you keep going, there's the yard at the end, right? Um, I think That's so. like that milkshake I think, place. I think it's over by like Tycoon. Yeah, it's it's by like the Sway and the Tycoon, oh, okay. and I'm trying to think what else is over there. There's like a know. Gong Cha like tea so shop over that, there. It's like area. in that like yeah, towards like more like the apartments. Oh, I'm going. Oh yeah, I'm going. It's dangerous, man. <laughs> what a fun. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Now you, when you make yeah. a pizza and you're not not gonna throw it on a salad, <laughs> what kind of pizza do you make yourself? <laughs> um, you know, to be honest, I'm a sucker for our cheese pizza. Um, Just a straight cheese yeah. pizza. Yeah. Well, because, you know, it's we're using a mozzarella. Um, so, you know, we have a bunch of different cheeses. So we use like a fresh mozzarella for our margarita. And, you know, that's kind of where you see like the pools of cheese on a yeah. pizza. I um, had that. We had a little conversation yeah. with my daughter with that, too. Yeah. The she differences. Like, that's not cheese. Yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> sure wait is. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, so there's like the margarita pizza, which most people think of, you know, if you're getting a Neapolitan pizza, that's kind of your baseline, right? Like, if if you yeah. like a place's margarita pizza, you're probably going to like most of the rest of their food. You know, they're using the right ingredients. Um, and then the cheese pizza that we do is, you know, very much like a New York style pizza. So um, the the brand of mozzarella that we use, it's like it comes in, you know, a big kind of like loaf and you shred it through, you know, a RoboCoop. And um, 
it's called Grande. I think they're out of Wisconsin, but it's it's the kind of it's like the uh, it's like the base cheese that most pizzerias in New York use. It's kind of the standard. Like, you know, if if you go to a place and they're not using Grande or some comparable brand, you know, it's probably not going to be great. You know, that's where you'll find like the ninety nine cent slices and things like that. Right. Um, so we use that, and and I specifically wanted to use that because I wanted it to taste like what you know I knew it should. You know, from yeah. my experience. Um, so that's like if I'm if I'm feeling like nostalgic or a little homesick, that's kind of what my craving is. Um, but then we have like on the other side, my other favorite on the menu is the sweet and spicy, um, which I don't think you tried. I think you guys got a cheese pizza, we right? Had, no, we had to get – we got pepperoni, but pepperoni, we couldn't yeah. get the sweet and spicy because uh, – because it was spicy, right? yeah, <laughs> or or it had the word spicy, in it, yeah. So God forbid, yeah. She probably would have liked it, but yeah. So what's on that? So that's kind of like if if there were to be like a meat lovers, that's kind of what that one is. So it's a uh, red sauce, um, pepperoni, soppressata. Um, we do a uh, garlic confit um, on it, and then a uh, a puree yeah. of Calabrian chilies, which is like the spicy, um, and then it gets fresh mozzarella. And um, when it comes out of the oven, it uh, we make a bacon marmalade. Um, so we use tender belly bacon. It's like, when does the list end? Yeah. That's, that's ridiculous. It's, it's the loaded, yeah. It's like the super heavy, you know, I, I tell people like, I know that we're American and you don't want to eat this pizza with a fork and knife, but I'd recommend maybe a fork and knife. Like it's a very <laughs> heavy pizza. Yeah. Um, but it's so loaded with flavor. It's so good. Very cool. Yeah. So that could be a go-to. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. And then it comes down to the one segment of this podcast. Mm-hmm. Where do you guys go eat? <laughs> so start this one off. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, let's see. We go, we love to go over to Odd Duck. It's definitely one of our favorite restaurants. We've spent countless anniversaries and birthdays there. Mm. Um, we love Din Ho Chinese Barbecue okay. up north. That yeah. is, yeah, that is a go-to always. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, there's Suerte. Yes. Um, is trying to get Chef Farmer in here. Really, yeah. I've never been there. It's That's incredible. Oh man, right here. Even this. their happy hour, their brunch is incredible. Yeah. It, it's a great spot. That whole strip uh, has got just yeah. ridiculous food. Oh, Next yeah. door, via three, via three. three. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing what's happened on that whole road in the last five, six years. I mean, since we moved here, like because we used to frequent Whistler's on like a Saturday night after service, and that it's completely transformed. Completely. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got Lazarus <laughs> Brewing and Zilker Brewing. I mean, Spicy Boys, the food truck there at Zilker is incredible and then uh i mean we'll say last straw is there i don't yep. know if you know okay yep. they last just straw. flip their menu he's going to come out with an episode oh cool in a couple That's weeks awesome. here yeah yeah it's it sixth street has has become kind of like a destination i think and yeah. you know i think i mean we've only been here for six years so we're you know part of that problem that some people talk about but um <laughs> yeah well you know. i don't even know if you can it's I, yeah it is what it is you're I think. acceptable yeah thank you <laughs> <laughs> you opened a pizza place yeah i appreciate okay. that <laughs> but um, but yeah, you know it's it's just really amazing to see what's happened, and I'm really glad that Liberty Bar is still there because God, it's our I love favorite, that place. Favorite okay. dive, All yeah. Right. <laughs> Liberty's a great spot. There um, we go. But yeah, I mean, as far as other food places, you know, um, if you're looking for dim sum, uh, New Fortune Seafood and Dim Sum on Sundays, um, okay. on Sundays and on holidays, um, they have this huge banquet hall. Um, so they open it up, and there's like thousands of people rolling through there, wow. and it's it's carts. real dim sum with the carts coming oh, yeah. around, and very cool. That's yeah. a really cool spot. Um, we have some polvos. For you guys some go fajitas. out a lot. Oh gosh, no. Uh, <laughs> not, <laughs> no, any, not no. anymore. We used to. Oh, okay. That used yeah. to be like how we spent our weekends was going to restaurants. Yeah. Um, well, it sounds like you guys like the finer things, like odd duck and Gucci yeah. and yeah. Oh, but, yeah. I mean, we're not afraid to get down on fajitas at polvos or for get sure. some margs, you know, some frozen oh, yeah. margaritas. Need that. Need that. Yeah. Uh, I have to ask, have you been to 40 North yet? I haven't. Okay. I think, have you been or no? No, no, no been? we have not been. You got to yeah. go try that out. Yeah. yeah. That's Clinton. Uh, and he like lives there with his son. Oh, really? Yeah. That's There's cool. like a house out back. Yeah. That's cool. It That's cool. cool. Yeah. He's, we got to get over there because, yeah. yeah, I mean, as far as pizza, I mean, you know, we live basically um, at like William Cannon in Southwest Parkway. So the, the Via 313 at Oak Hill is- It's yeah. our go-to. Um, it's our go-to. I'm surprised I haven't seen you there. Yeah. yeah. My daughter and I, <laughs> oh, it's great. we frequent it's there. so good. Have you ever gotten the dessert thing that they do? Like the pizza sticks with the powdered sugar and is it like, like maple syrup or something? cinnamon sugar and like, yeah. a, like cream cheese I've glaze. Got, oh, oh yeah, those are really good. Oh no. Yeah. You yeah. just yeah. added it's, whatever yeah. that oh. cost to my bill. Yep. Yeah. Because oh, we're yeah. always- So good. Pizza, breadsticks, a pizza for her because we can't decide on the same thing. And then a couple beers in, you're spending 50 some bucks. Oh, yeah, easy. 60, yeah. now you just added that. Well, yep. well, you know what we do if you're trying to avoid the calorie count? Um, we'll usually, like, share, like, the chopped salad. Yeah. Right? What is chopper ca- salad or chopper salad? Yeah. yeah, those are not a <laughs> thing. Not when I go to Vietnam. Yeah. No I just, way. 
But but we'll usually be, we'll usually split a salad and then get like a pizza and, and that's usually it. good for the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's a good move. Yeah. Yeah. And and um, I can't do that with her. But to be <laughs> honest, you guys are a lot closer and. What, t- what How late are you guys open? So we're Wednesday to Sunday, 11 to 11. Okay, um, perfect. For now, we're midnight on Saturdays, um, but we're kind of toying with the hours a little bit to see what fits. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's I've always wanted a decent pizza closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? No, yeah. Because it's kind of far from here. It is. Days. It's far yeah. enough, but we we do it very often. Yeah. Um, we have down the street, I'm not bashing them, um, by the district. Um, Magian. No, it's oh. not. It, what? Are you talking about Manja? Yes, yeah. Manja. I haven't been there either. I've They've heard. They've got a location in Lakeway, right? Uh, that no, was... that's. Um, there's Craigos and then there's a Man Jerry's. Okay, Man Jerry's. Man Jerry's. Yeah, maybe it's, that one. maybe it's the same. I'm one, thinking yeah. that. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, and I just it doesn't resonate with me. I yeah, go, I, we, no, I've and that's tried fair. it, but. I would much rather go past it and go to via three one three and wait if I had to. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the amazing thing is like you know I was listening to the the podcast that you guys did with them and you know I mean because we've experienced it where you know you'll call it like seven o'clock at night and you're like okay you know maybe it's like forty five minutes or an hour wait and it's like a two and a half hour wait for a pie. I mean they are just yeah. cranking it out. Yeah. Well, it's there's incredible. A, there's a sweet spot if you yeah. can act like an old person and go at five thirty. <laughs> You're good, and yeah. then yeah. like you'll see five forty five. There's like all the, the seats fill up six o'clock. You know seven six fifteen when you're leaving. There's yeah. people waiting there. It's amazing. But if we show up at six fifteen and we got a forty five minute wait, oh, yeah. that's why yeah. God made yellow rose. Yeah, <laughs> you know? so it's doable. Yeah, <laughs> if you haven't actually had, I, it's it's one of my favorite beers that I've tasted in Texas. But um, Lone Pine uh, makes. I don't even know if they still make it. I don't know what the deal is with it, but um, it's basically a double IPA version of Yellow Rose called Jabberwocky. Oh, God. And it is <laughs> unreal. Yeah. I'm always looking for stuff like that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That was that was one of the cool things about Hops and Time in Lakeway was we had 36 taps and they were all craft. So oh, that's dangerous Learned a too. lot. Yeah. That could contribute to the, you know, the depression. Uh, it did. <laughs> I'm it, sure it did. It did. Yeah, there were yeah. many a late night there just drinking for the sake of drinking. Yeah, that's um, never good. No. Not no, with lack healthy. of sleep and too many hours. And yeah. Yeah, but no, it's it's been it's been really good. So, you know, Pizzeria Grotta has been an awesome experience so far. Well, cool, and and it's uh, two, it's a baby. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. and I keep having to remind myself of that. You yes. know, there are wow. days where I get impatient. Like you know, today or well, today was a decent lunch, but yesterday was a really slow lunch. And I'm just like, you know, why aren't people coming in? What's the big deal? Like, you know, what are sure. we doing right? You know, and I keep these that, are the ups and downs. These are now the ups you, and downs. You're, you're friends with. Uh, a broken breakfast shop, Ryan. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, uh, I, I took her over there for the first time, but I've been over there a few times. And killer. Oh, so great good. food. So good. That's so ridiculous. Good. I'm, yeah, I'm so happy for him, and you know, he's been killing it at the uh, at the new thicket location. Um, yeah. So if anyone's but in South Austin hasn't him. been, he's he's experiencing. You know, mm-hmm. I think he gets he, a little bit of frustration here, but yeah, you know, he had gone through what Eric Silverstein. Yes. And, yeah. He was at. He was. I think the catering sous chef for Peach Tortilla. Um, when he came down here, okay, yeah. But if you listen to Eric to talk about his experience, you know, opening Peach Tortilla, yeah, he said all the same things you guys yeah. are saying, <laughs> and he said it's not always rainbows, and it's no. not never. I mean, of course, there's instant success sometimes, mm-hmm. but that's like a really rare thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to, yeah, you have to strike lightning, and it's, you know, even even big restaurants like we haven't. Well, you've been to Comador for like a drink and a snack. Yeah. I haven't been at all yet. Um, you know, so the I, sad thing is I've been there like three times, but I've never eaten there. Oh, really? <laughs> We've done like interviews and yeah. stuff. Yeah, oh, that's so funny. Yeah. yeah, I need to. I need. Yeah, I, I got to get it's over good. there too. Bone marrow tacos. That's the oh, talk. That's crazy. Yeah, they look ridiculous. Yeah, I yeah, think it was it those. was on the cover of like Austin Monthly or Austin okay. yeah. Magazine or yeah, yeah. something nice. Um, Chef Gabe, over there. Yeah, is like a giant sweetheart and. Yeah, I'm gonna get him over here. Yeah. to do this. Yeah, because he's from is it Daidue, right? Um, I don't know. I heard. No, I don't know where he's from. Yeah, I think it's Daidue because I know it's funny. He knows Ben, so he knows one of the guys that I graduated culinary school with. Um, he did like a kind of collab dinner um, in Tampa with one of the guys that I went to school with. But, no kidding. Um, yeah. So you guys crossed path. Did you meet him there? No, no, no. I haven't actually met him. Um, it was just kind of funny. Like when I. When I found Gabe on Instagram, um, it was like right around the time that he was at Noma, Mexico. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was at Noma, Mexico. Yeah. And um, also next week, mm-hmm. uh, which will be in the past, but sure, um, Barn Grill, uh, Brandon Silver. Brandon Silver. He was at uh, Noma in Copenhagen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. There's stories. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's pretty crazy how um, how much of an impact that restaurant has had. You know. In, over the years and, and now they're doing some, I mean, they're, they've jumped on board um, with the mental health, you know, thing. And 
Um, they're now paying for um, their employees to go on um, vacations, like three month vacations paid. Oh, wow. I think it's three months because um, um, they had a few employees go and do it. And Rene um, is on the vacation right now. And then when he gets back, someone else is going to go. And, um, you know, because, yeah, it's it's incredible. Um, and it's the shift is happening. I think um, it just takes time to adopt the practices. Sure. You know. Sure, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I... I I always told I told Philip Spear when mm -hmm. when I was there that it was like I always pitched this as like come in, come take in let's let's drink you know and yeah. be merry and I'm like I'm like contributing to the the big old <laughs> you know stereotype and but you know a lot of people still do and, and uh, people don't uh, all have problems with it but yeah healthier lifestyle is like that's 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 the the focus it yeah. should be the focus yeah so. 100%. and it's it's a good breeding ground for it here in austin you know with with the amount of outdoor activity there is here and yeah you know sunshine. That kind of stuff it's the sunshine. amount of sunshine, sunshine. i mean sunshine. not something and you get much don't of in give new york. yourself so much of a hard time for coming here from new york yeah <laughs> you open a pizza place and you sure don't act like you're, all is you're well. from uh, new york yeah thank you I've, i think i've learned to hide the accent fairly well <laughs> you 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 have that's why yes. i was surprised so yeah. but anything anything we should bring up anything you guys got going on um, anything special Oh, I didn't tell everyone about the pay it forward pizza. Um, there we go. Just to oh. mention that real quick. Yeah, um, yes. So we have on our menu, um, it's the first item on our pizza menu um, is a pay it forward pie. Um, so we are right across the street from the Sunrise Church, um, you know, down in South Austin. There's, like we were talking about earlier, there's a massive, um, you know, homeless population issue. Um, and homelessness kind of struck my family a little bit. I had never experienced it myself, but, um, you know, my mom um, comes from a, you know, pretty abusive household. Um, and her oldest brother got the brunt of it when he was a kid. Um, so he developed, you know, paranoid schizophrenia and oh, no. um, yeah. So he, he lived most of his life homeless, um, or at least most of his adult life. Um, and it's, it's always been something like, Hey, like, you know, uncle Helen, you know, he resurfaced, he's in a hospital. We're going to go see him. You yeah. Know, that was, uh, you know, part of how my childhood was spent just, you know, going to see my uncle, you know, in the hospital or in some, you know, home that he wound up in. Um, so, you know, that's something that kind of hits close to home, especially with all of the things that have been happening in Austin lately. Sure. Um, so this pay it forward pizza, um, it's $3 and essentially what it does is, uh, it puts a pizza into a rolling account and we communicate with a lot of the local shelters and churches to organize, um, like pizza parties per se, um, either for, you know, people who are homeless or displaced or, you know, need a meal, um, or even like an after school program for kids who are, you know, who have parents who are working late nights and things like that. And, you know, just trying to make sure that everyone gets a hot meal. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. The pay it forward pizza. Yeah. And we also did not mention on um, on air here there, that you do 25%. 25% off for service industry, 20% um, off for uh, first responders, medical industry, and teachers. Um, yeah, I mean, that's that was one of the big things, especially, you know, Grata and, you know, really trying to practice gratitude every day is, you know, making sure that the people who spend their lives taking care of us get taken care of for once and you know make sure that everyone's able to afford a good meal love it love it so anything with uh iced cakes that we should we should know <laughs> um i mean we're if you're getting married <laughs> you yeah, if you're getting married please give us a call we'd love to make your cake um i don't think so i mean we're kind of playing right now with the possible macaron subscription service Ooh. and stuff like that or cookie subscription we've been playing around with a few different ideas but nothing too set in stone yet we're throwing out our first we're setting out our first um shipment next week so okay. just to friends and family to see how it all goes well keep us in the loop here yeah we definitely yeah. will we like to talk about it a little bit if it's happening yeah Absolutely. yeah definitely cool well thank you guys for coming Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Head over to Pizza Pizza Grata. Yes. Yeah. And uh, if you uh, need to get married, you know where to go. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, man. Thank you. Yeah.